afternoon and welcome to today's episode. My name is Monica Moding and I'm here with uh, Dr. Atuki Tana, who is the Executive Director of Mifumi. If you've heard about Mifumi projects, they are all over the country, specifically in the eastern side. And I'm delighted to be hosting her just to trace her leadership journey for some of us who are interested in leading in the civic sector, civic actors. This is the place to be, to learn, to be inspired. But as we do this, we are inspiring younger women to walk these journeys of leadership and impact uh, the world. So, Tana Atuki, doctor. <laughs> I could add that comfortably as well, I think. So you're welcome to this program. Thank you. So, so delighted that you're able to give us time to have a conversation with us because we want to grow an audience that can be, you know, taught online, inspired online. Our daughters, our colleagues, women, who can be able to pick a few things from us, the people we host on this program, to also grow in leadership, but more importantly, impacting the country and the globe in terms of their interventions and yeah. leadership yeah. journeys. So you're welcome, Mom. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Amadine. Where can I say? Tororo <laughs> or from, where? From Tor well, from Tororo, mm -hmm. you could say, yeah. All Everywhere, over. Yes. since you're working all over the place. Yes, yes. yeah. I came, I came from Kampala today, mm -hmm. but, uh, but yesterday I was in Tororo. Yeah. A few months ago, I was, um, yes, elsewhere. Wow. But that seems you to be the nature. You are a global citizen. I'm a global citizen. That's the right yes, word. That's yeah. true. Yes. That's true. Yeah. So I, uh, I, I would just like to trace your journey because... As we trace that journey, there are people that are walking their journeys and they would like to. You know, it's not easy to get a woman like you. Some people would <laughs> like know. to be mentored by you and they cannot know where to find you. And uh, growing organizations, growing institutions is a real challenge. It's a leadership yes. challenge. Yes. And uh, that's where we want to pick it from. But before we go there, we'd just like to, 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 to walk with you that journey of your early life, you know, growing up, the young Atuki in Tororo, in yes. Mifumi perhaps. Mm -hmm. I don't know yes. if that's the right Part place. Part of it. And yes. then your school life, how it was. Mm -hmm. And of course, then the, 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 the career that you, you, you started in, uh, you know, impacting society at that level. That's what we would like to trace in the program. So how was it like growing, growing up? Growing up? Yeah. Well, it was a big family. Mm -hmm. That's what I um, I remember. We were about, we were 11. Yeah. So we always said we were a football team. Of course, complete. Yeah, about six girls. Of five, how old? Six girls. And yeah, and, and five boys. So mm. it was really lovely, big, happy family um, in Tororo. Mm -hmm. um, I, actually, I was born in Bali. Then we moved to Tororo. And um, I'm number four in the family so what they say about kids who are in the middle of the big family nobody the, the parents really care don't about take the, the, the first and the, and the last, last oh, yeah. yeah so we're yeah. left to do our own thing uh -huh. and are, are liberal because nobody's really you know cracking the whip mm. and and it was really good you know um i went to t primary school called rockview school in tororo rockview is still there up to now is still there <laughs> then in p6 third term my parents thought I needed a bit of discipline, mm. so they took me to Dabani mm. Girls, oh. which was uh, run by nuns, oh, yes. a lovely lady called yeah. Sister Justin. And a lovely school by then. Yes, yes, yeah. And it's still there. And it's still there. Yeah. So it, it did, you know, then we, you know, I managed to knuckle down and start reading and working mm -hmm. and uh, did my primary as well. And I remember when the results came out, Sister Justin was like, oh, Koth, you know, you got some... Um, you could have got a scholarship, but um, you were fourth in the district, and wow. they're only taking the first three this this um, this year. Wow! And um, you know she was really pleased with my English because mm -hmm. I got ninety seven. Wow! And so she was saying those three marks, Ooh. only three. You could have got the three, but um, it was still also tinged with sadness because my parents were not very rich. We were just um, with a large family, family. To take care of. Mm. Yeah, and but they just valued education. And they had really hoped I'd manage to get a scholarship mm. to go to Namagunga. Mm -hmm. And so I remember feeling really happy that I'd got my results and I was doing well. You were the and star then I just in saw the district. Them, yes. Mm -hmm. Then I saw them sitting in the sitting room and they were talking. And they kind of looked grave and serious. And later my mom also told me the same thing. She said, you know, I took you, we're really hoping you'd 
we get a scholarship, a scholarship so we don't know how we're oh, going to manage yeah. your fees mm. and all that but i managed to go to namagunga and, with a scholarship uh, with, right? you know they paid oh. they paid their way and yeah we, we i was the third because my two sisters before me had also gone there mm -hmm. and they just put everything into education wow. So and so I was for the next six years after that I was at Namagunga. Wow. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And Namagunga and was like the dream. Every girl would be dreaming to go to Namagunga. Yes, yeah. It's it's it did. So so um so my two sisters. So did it shape me, your 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 future in terms of career thoughts and that school I think yes. has a way that it was very good and very bad for me. Mm. I, I um did really well. In terms of leadership, I was always in, in class, I was mm -hmm. always like mm -hmm. the prefect mm -hmm. in primary. Mm -hmm. ah. When I went to Namagunga, I was quite naughty. It wasn't until S4 that I became prefect. Very serious. But then I went on to A levels and, and then was deputy head girl. Mm -hmm. um, but my two sisters before me who had also been there, and in fact, my two sisters after me also went there. Mm. They were very, very good. So I was not such a good example of the family because I was quite naughty. Oh. Uh, but but I think Namagunga was good for me because it just it fostered discipline. A discipline. Yeah, discipline and yes. love for one's country. For some country reasons, most and, of the Catholic you know, schools they mm, really impact on children in yes, terms of discipline yes. a lot of times. But mm. I think the downside is because the teaching was so well and mm. I was quite good on both arts and sciences, mm. I then did the sciences because... Um, in those days, everybody wanted to do sciences. Wow. You know, in Uganda, times were hard and, you know, everybody wanted to somehow go into the sciences. So my two sisters and brother before me had done the sciences mm -hmm. and were now doing medicine. Mm -hmm. So the parents just automatically pushed me into A-level sciences, physics, chemistry, mm -hmm. maths. I didn't have a clue. Uh, on that? On that. And so I had it done wasn't very your passion, well. It wasn't my passion. I couldn't understand I it. I actually fled from my chemistry class Did back you? Then. I yes, wish I had. I had to run. <laughs> I, I just wish had, I had to be fled. forced back because it was compulsory. I just so had to you, you force knew what myself. You wanted. Mm. Yes. I knew what I wanted. I was good in, in English and arts. And yes. I of, you know, the histories, I would score highly. But yes. Somehow chemistry for me, that chemistry, I think what was bad was even the teacher. Yes. Who taught it? Yes. I could not understand his English, and well, unfortunately, but somehow I you had made to it. do it. No, you, and you pass knew your it. mind better, mm. but I, I was equally good. So yeah. I remember when we went to the, the biology class, Sister Felicia, this nun from America who mm. was teaching us, mm. just thought, What's a cough doing in my class? This girl is an artist. <laughs> so she ran to her back room and looked at the records and found us the only one in her class who had got a distinction one. Oh. And she thought, okay, well, okay, that, let's, okay. See. let's yeah. see how it goes. But so mm. that being multi-talented mm. and multitask was mm. really a problem. Mm. So, of course, I didn't do well Wow. and decided to repeat. Mm -hmm. So my parents took me to Toro Girls School uh, to repeat S6. was my level school. Was it? Yeah. Okay, were you there mm. with uh, Nima? Nima, yes, shortly mm. after she had gone. Mm. Yeah, we were there yes. with the, this lady, Bire? I forget the name. No, no, no. no. Uh, who passed on recently? But, um, no, no, no. Mm. Much later. Pan, some of the women. Oh. Yes, somehow. Yes. Yeah. So I went there to repeat S6. I think I did even worse. Mm. And um, I was now really feeling low because mm -hmm. all my friends were now at, at university. Already. And here I was still milling around mm. A-levels. Then I remember, and, and it was very nice, you know, growing up with my parents, mm. my dad used mm. to help me to, to read poetry. You know, Abu Ben Adem and his 40 dreams. <laughs> Because I loved elocution, so he was a very, very good friend to me growing mm. up. But by the time I was failing S6, mm. not well, I got admitted for Bachelor of Science. Okay, but, but I that's didn't want plain, to do it. You know, that's mm. not your. It wasn't really your passion. Did, I didn't think I wanted to do that. Mm. So, so um, he said he really doesn't see the point of continuing to pay fees. So my mom mortgaged, and he had just retired, and we'd moved to our own house. Times were hard. Yeah, no. So my mom got her prize pig. And took it to her uncle, um, uncle country, uh, uh, Kaburu. Mm -hmm. He had a farm, mm. and she mortgaged the pig to pay my fees Ooh. to do S S six second time. Wow. Didn't do well. Mm. So then my sister, who was by now at <coughs> Mulago Galloway House, okay. said, "I took you. You're not. You're just not a scientist. I know. Because you've been doing well all mm -hmm. your life." Mm. Um, it, it, you just did the wrong course. Mm. Go and do the arts. Yeah. So she, um, she got me a place at Macquarie College in third term. Wow. I did S5 third term, went on to S6. Ah. 
got my got good results. Went to law school with the I think the fourth highest marks oh, in the class. In the entire Mm, probably country yeah country, of course yeah. because they were admission yes, government yeah. mm. and and did law mm. so i think it's it's funny but that um kind of failure really became a, 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 really inspired many young mm. people because mm. they kept saying if i took it could do it mm. why I can't can i do yeah it. let yeah. me repeat mm. let me try something different we had a colleague did it. Who, mm. who we didn't quite think was a scientist yeah but for some reason this girl uh kept persevering mm. and repeated quite a number i think twice. yes but the third time yes she excelled and was among the best in this wow in the in the country and she's right now a doctor Good. I think, yeah. Good. Yeah. It really mm. shows that there's mm. really no such thing as failure. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just different routes mm. that we take mm. to get to a certain to get to our destination. Yeah. And and you just never really give up if you know what you want. Mm. Some people know what they want. They Others do. like me are not never keep, really clear. Yeah, yeah. But if you keep just, you know, it's not a straight line to who you are. Yeah. Cuz cuz you know, in terms of us as people, they there's who there's who we think we are. There's who people so think, think we, we are, are, and then there's who we really are, we are. the subconscious. Okay. Right. So it, it takes a lifetime, wow. even up to now, we you still know, uh, we're still discovering. Uh -huh. So I think that really, um, people who are young people still looking towards their future should just not really look at success and failure as very black and white, mm. you know, cut mm. out, cut out mm. like that. Because mm. there's one of my favorite poets um, called Ru Rudyard Kipling. Mm. You might have, you, you know, probably this poem called If. Mm -hmm. If you do this, if mm. you do that, mm. if you don't do this, you'll okay. be a man, my son. Mm -hmm. One of the lines I really like are, if you can treat a triumph and disaster um, the same, mm -hmm. and because they're both imposters, yeah? If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat these in, two imposters the same, you'll be a man, my son. Uh. Now, I could say you'll be a woman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, it, you know, fame and success, fame and disaster, they're just... Temporary. On, one, mm. on the same coin, yeah, you're, they kept yes. just interchanging. That's right. Okay. Yes. Uh, Atuki, we would like to to try to trace your your memory, memorable times, moments when you were growing up. You know, those are very important. There are those some moments can be life changing. What are some of those good, good, good moments that you can recall? Um, so, so I think I've always been attuned to social justice issues. Okay. And um, growing up, I was normally top of the class, mm. so I'd always get the first always. prize. Always. But in third year, in in, S, in P3, Ooh. primary P3, okay. I had to come for an operation in Mulago, mm. went back after about a term mm -hmm. and became third. So we went to get prizes and I was at the back with my dad. And I remember my name was called, um, actually, no, I, I came first, mm. but I received the third prize. Because by the time I walked to the front, Someone Omondi, had already got Patrick there. Omondi, you remember even his remember name, his name. already <laughs> taken my bag. And, and also, I wasn't, you know, so tidy. My dad was frowning, mm -hmm. both at the state of my uniform and the prize I had failed to get. So that taught me opportunity only knocks once. Knocks once, Really yes. get up when your name is called. And you have to take yeah, the opportunity. Yeah, because sometimes mm. people are shy. Mm -hmm. And, and um, especially in class, you know, even if a teacher asks you, asks the class, who knows about this poem? Mm -hmm. you, know, you might know it or you might know a story, but you're but feeling you shy. Back on it, yeah. it really mm. doesn't, mm. It, it doesn't really help anybody, mm. Mm. you know. And then in, in um, P6, we're girl guides. So I think that's important for the girl child because yeah. a lot of times girls try to sit back because yes. that's what society thinks about us. You are, you know, held back by so You're many things. Back. You don't take advantage of opportunities. True. And it can be in your character. Because mm. even when I was doing my master's in creative writing, mm -hmm. the, in, in women's studies, we're mm. talking about this man who wrote a poem. Mm. Sorry, I'm going to tell you about so many poems. I love them. But um, mm -hmm. this guy, he wrote a lovely, lovely poem about... He's the love of his life, you know, the sun never shines, but I see the bright eyes of my beautiful Annabelle Lee. Wow. The, the moon never beams, but I, you know, whatever. So the, she asked, who knows about this poem? Nobody said anything. Haven't any of you heard of it? No, I had heard of it, but I didn't say yes. So I think that there's this kind of modesty that we have as Africans oh, yeah. and even as Christians. Mm -hmm. And many, many girls especially, mm -hmm, especially don't speak out and feel shy to share their knowledge. Luckily, that's changing a lot that's now. That's changing. Mm. That's changing. But I think that's important. Mm. So mm. then the other memorable event was um, as girl guides, we were camping at the school. Then um, 
there was only two parents who came. They were new in town. They were very well to do. They, they were, their daughter was really obviously the favorite, mm -hmm. but I was the girl guide leader. At that time? At that time. Wow. So the parents came. They were the only parents. So, so the girl guide teacher came and told me, hey, of course, her parents have come, so I'm going to tell them she is the leader. Oh. Just so that they're happy. Yeah? Okay. And I said, okay. So she, they announced her as the leader, and everybody knew she wasn't the leader. So I just thought, um, I just felt the injustice. Even as a child, uh -huh. you know that something that is, is not right. Not right, right. Yeah, mm. and, and of course, with hindsight, I could say maybe it was good because at least the parents turned out. Our, our, our parents, parents didn't, did, yeah. but hers mm. did. Mm. But still, you know the injustice. Mm. And you get a lot of these injustices in classrooms where teachers favor. Favor certain yes, students, students, certain students, yeah. up to a university. Up to university, mm, mm. and and like Maya Lu, Maya Angelou, the you know writer, the American writer oh, said, yes, Mary. You, mm. Yes, mm. you you might forget, you know, the name of a person, mm -hmm. but you never forget how they made you feel. Oh yeah, you know. Oh, so yeah. as um, mm. as an activist, what I always what I always tell my staff is that the women who come to our organization, the women who come to our shelters, our advice centers. Mm. They must live feeling better mm -hmm. than when than they came. Before. Yeah. Than before. Mm. Yeah, so so how you make a person feel is very, very important. Very, very mm. important. Yeah, because very that, good. they will never forget about that particular yes. experience. So Sorry about my glasses, that. Yeah. It's well. We yeah. seem to be having some yes. yeah, small insects around. So th th that's a very powerful lesson, actually. Mm. And uh, for a social justice person, yeah. you can easily tell in terms of the way they respond yes. to such. So how did you respond to that injustice? Um, I think I kind of, um, it, it became part of my DNA. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've ended up fighting injustice. Mm. Because I'm very attuned to the what I call the underdog, the mm -hmm. person who is disadvantaged, mm. the person who seems not oppressed. I pick those signs up really easily. Very easily. Very easily. Mm. So, so mm. I'll, I'll tell you about another one. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a happy event is my dad teaching me how to read Abu Ben Adem, The 40 Thieves. So it actually inspired you into this creative writing yes, and reading and as well. Yes, and electrician. You know, if yeah. I'm going to have electrician at school, mm -hmm. I'd stand outside and he'd listen to me and correct. And he was he was a civil engineer, so he was the town you know engineer. work supervisor. Okay. Mm. And he went to he got a car mm -hmm. in nineteen seventy probably seventy one, seventy two. Mm. It was a Toyota Corolla. Wow. Lime green, mm -hmm. you know, a bit like the palm trees. Mm. And it was it was just the poshest car in town. In town, of it, course. Uh, and I can imagine. You know, the mm. sound was just swish. <laughs> really cool. He was and, and by then he was a young forty year forty year old bike. You know, married man, mm -hmm. really very, with very, a lovely family. You know, the lovely family. Yeah. So I remember that he used to take us to school when mm. he had his old Austin, mm -hmm. blue, mm. and he'd just drop us at the gate and wow. go on and wow. go home. Wow. When he got his Toyota Coro Crown, which is called Toyota Crown, mm. he went. He took me right into the school during assembly. We were even a bit late, so the whole school was there. <laughs> we went right round the roundabout. Assembly stopped. Okay. And the headmaster, everybody stopped. So and to I see who out. is this one. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then he drove off, and I was, and you know, they were like, "Oh God, is that your dad's car? Mm -hmm. His mm -hmm. new car?" And, mm -hmm. and then, okay, well, let's go back to prayers. Wow. So we went back to prayers, and I that thought can this be a is proud really moment good. for a young person, a young child to yeah. see their daddy, and you know. I thought it was a good side of him because yeah. I thought he's also human. Mm -hmm. He likes to show off. Mm -hmm. When he's got a good thing, you know, normally he's very strict mm, and mm, prayerful and mm, authoritative. But mm. there's this Our human side of him. Our families inspire us a lot, I think. Yeah. So those kind of things inspire children to work more yeah. harder, you know. That, mm. I think that was a good, happy moment. Okay. Those mm. are, of course, I know you have so many. You had a good uh, part yes. of life growing up and there could be so many. Yeah. But I'm interested now in tracing your journey at university and then how you ended up in this activism generally. You know. Right. Mm. So I went. To, so I went to law school, mm. um, and then chanced on the, the book Simone de Beauvoir, mm -hmm. The Second Sex. Mm -hmm. It's like the most comprehensive book on feminism. Okay. And my, I had even finished my career, and I went to join my sister in in um, Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And her her husband was is an, a, a sort of political activist. Okay. Yoga dollar. Mm. Right. So he said, you know, you should read this book. And I read it and it changed my life. Because mm. mm. I before, you know, before that growing up, I felt I was going to inherit the world. It's going to treat me like it treats everybody else. 
and life goes on. Mm. I didn't realize that there was this whole wall of discrimination and injustice that women face. That women face. Yeah, because, because I hadn't faced it mm, as a mm. child. So that book awakened you. Yeah. It did. Mm, mm. Then I started remembering things I used to notice. My aunt coming home crying in the morning, and you know, she, my dad asks her, "What's the matter?" And he said, "He's beaten me." And she say, he says, "Why?" He said, because "He came back late, and I asked him, where have you been?" And, and he just and, beat me and up he just for beat that. Me. <laughs> and my dad was saying something like, ah, oh, it's not good to ask a, a man, where have you been? Mm -hmm. And I thought, why not? You why know? not? And then another time I saw my mom sitting in the sitting room with my another aunt mm -hmm. and her husband. Mm. She was trying to reconcile them. Mm. And he was telling all sorts of things about her and saying, she's this, she's that. You know, all the list of thing, things wrong things that, that yeah, women do. Of course. You mm. know, doesn't cook, doesn't respect me, doesn't look after the children. Doesn't serve my food. Doesn't serve my food. <laughs> And I was looking at her and she was smiling at him and trying to be, you know, modest and, modest and, courteous, you and know? like, forgive mm. me, forgive mm. me, forgive me. And I thought, this is so wrong. Mm -hmm. In fact, I just stood there and glared at the man. Um, then later, as I read Simone de Beauvoir's book, The Second Sex, I could relate and think, yeah, I remember this and that. And you put two and two together. So I think it just made me an activist wow. from wow. that time on. Wow. And when we were at law, when we were at law school, mm. Makovia, who was our lecturer, mm -hmm. you know, Frederick Duke oh. was very good. Oh. So, so um, you know, Makovia, at that time, the gender department was just opening. Just opening up, right? And, mm. and they asked her, they asked him. The, I think Kadaga was their first officer, ah. Re Honorable Rebecca Kadaga. Okay. And they asked him, you know, we were li looking for legal officers. Are there any you'd recommend? And she said, Yeah, for gender, Egunu. Honorable Egunu Fiona, I remember her. Wow. And and Atuki. Oh. So I think even at that time, even though we I didn't know it, they must have seen something about some interest in you. In gender. Yeah. yeah. And for some reason the law school I, up to today is still a little bit gender uh, blind in many of its mm. practices. And I think it's one of those conservative areas which yes. have been slow to change. Oh yeah. yeah. You get a lot of um So you how know, was you your experience trying to set up that? you know the ch the charity yes mm -hmm. so so then i came back and uh, it just happened by accident really mm -hmm. um my par my parents when they, my, when they retired because my dad as i told you was a civil engineer mm. my mother was a teacher mm. so we went to this they retired to this village called mifumi that's, that's where the charity place. derives its name uh -huh. yeah so they set about there was an old dilapidated school you know mud wall grass roof and they started just naturally trying to rebuild it so that termites wouldn't attack it mm -hmm. and the roof wouldn't you know rot during the rainy season and they got they roped us kids in to volunteer at the school uh -huh. so i used to teach there after s6 during law school i'd teach wow my my students my, my pupils sat on tree stumps mm -hmm. on the floor mm -hmm. we wrote in the sand mm -hmm. you know we looked at the sun to learn how to tell the time wow and you know i've been to Namagunga, my, my brothers Some had been to Kisubi. Yes. I knew about Kampala, pa, you know, mm. Kitante mm. and Nakasero. Mm. I just thought there's no chance for these kids. Whoa. They're not going to compete yeah, with their with the Kampala teams. Mm. Yeah, so then Lakwena came, that rebel civil unrest, and okay. my father lost his life oh. you know, during that time. Sorry. Yeah, he was mm. killed by a rebel mm. young boy. Mm. So, so then we all scattered. Mm. And that's when I went to join my sister, who was now living in Kenya. Oh, yeah. And I mm. met my husband, Glenn. Mm. Mm. He was teaching at a lovely, lovely school in Nairobi called Starehe, Starehe ah. Boys Center. Ah. Just like a lovely school in the city. Mm. You know, Pri Princess Anne was their patron. Wow. It was managed by a guy called Griffin, a di the director. Mm. So Glenn told, you know, as, as young people talk, you know, what are your dreams? So he asked me, what are your dreams? And I said, I've just, I really made a promise that I would finish this school that my ah. father started. Okay. So he said, then let's do it. Mm -hmm. So just like that, we decided to, we got married, went to England, registered it as a charity. Wow. And started, and started. Uh, you know, looking for funds. So before we looked for funds, we, at our wedding, people, you know, people ask you there, what present do you want in the, ah, in the West? Okay. Uh, so you give, a, you, give, you take what you want for your house. We said, just write a check to Mifumi. Ah. So we opened the Mifumi account with 36 pounds. Ooh. And then went to London and held a disco at the Africa Center. Mm -hmm. And all proceeds went to Mifumi. 
then we had a wooden piggy bank mm. in the shape of a hat. Mm. So when friends would come to our school, how one would shake it in front of them and <laughs> say, put something in here. <laughs> and just like that, the school was built. Ooh. You know, and you concluded it. And we concluded it. It's now a primary school. It's now, we now are building the secondary school. Mm -hmm. You know, the first block is done. Mm. And uh, we made sure girls came to school free, mm. nursery. So mm. we already tried affirmative action. Oh, yeah. And um, and then we built a health center next to the school. Next to the school, because mm. um, you know the the kids who would come to school next day they wouldn't be there. Because mm -hmm. I'd say, what's happened to the little boy? He died of malaria. And then one of the boys who was working on the farm at home, he suddenly got very bad intestinal obstruction, obstruction and died and could not get an operation. Yeah, mm. it was mm. just painful. Mm. There was no such mm. no mm. health center. So we set up the health center. Mm -hmm. And then my mother was the, by then the chair of the Women's Guild. Wow. And that close contact with women sort of got us to start giving loans. Okay, to the women to in the, the women. villages. Mm. Yes. Then very quickly we realized they weren't paying back their loans. Mm. And that's when my mom told me, if you, the women, you know, their partners take things on credit mm -hmm. and when they ask for it back, they beat it, them. Yeah. Mm. Mm. They beat mm. them. Mm. So that's how domestic violence started. Ah, mm. you know, for some reason, we don't know that uh, Mufumi had a, a charity background uh, mm. of that nature. We, yes. we, we have a, a, a feeling that it's just around activism on domestic violence. And, and that's a powerful intervention you made in your community. Yeah, in fact, we were, re we were really... Actually being very... inspired by you and thinking about my own village. <laughs> what, what can I leave, yes. you know? We, we were really the darling of the community. Of they, course. You know, they were mm. so... People really loved because the school and the health center were built at a time when there was serious poverty in the mm -hmm, country. Mm -hmm. The NRM government had just come in, we were coming out of the economic war. Okay. And they, were, they said things like, Mifumi is now a city. Ah. You know, there, there's a health center with glass, there's a school with okay. electricity, electricity. There's, there's piped water. Okay. They even said, you need a map, they can, we can draw you a map to wow. get to Mifumi. Wow. They started songs about Mifumi City. They wrote, sang songs so about much. me. Mm. Those were the good days. Those were the honeymoon days. Wow. Until we started work on domestic, domestic violence. Domestic violence then. Then everything turned, you know. Those are some of the things that politicians are expected <laughs> to do. I'm now thinking, looking yes. at her, I'm wondering, why didn't she even contest for, oh, for, for parliament, for parliament. And she opted to... To continue there was a lot of activism. Yeah, mm. many people kept asking that mm -hmm. and saying, why don't you stand? Why don't you stand? I, it never really occurred to me. Maybe, I mean, it did, but I think the time never seemed right. Uh -huh. mm. You know, because mm. cause my mom, when she was a young girl, her father wanted to sell her off for bright price. Mm. Mm. And her brother stole her and took her to school. Mm -hmm. And and he was very influential in her life, and mm. he later became a cabinet minister Ooh. in Obote One. Okay, he was called James Ochola. Mm -hmm. So so um, growing up, my uncle was always a very central figure, and I was quite proud of him. Wow. So I remember once when I was at university, and I was thinking, yeah, maybe I, I'd like to go in that house yes. where my uncle was, uh -huh. and and I I'd, for some time I thought I'd go there, but. Activism Your priorities changed. Activism, mm. yes, and up to today, right. you are not even interested, I think. Well, mm, here, there, yeah, everywhere, not yeah, really there yet. Yeah. yeah. Wow, wow. So how did, uh, uh, why, why, why domestic violence? Because there's, you had tried education, you had tried yeah. the health sector. Are you still doing all that in Mufumi right now? We, we still have the school and health center, and mm. that's managed by a different side. Okay. You know? mm. um, Glenn, my partner, manages that health all and right. education, mm. and also... And, and so um, so then she came and told us about the domestic violence, my mother. Mm. And she said, you know, you really have to look at this. Then there was a horrific case of sexual assault in the city. In the city. Yeah, and the district council leaders came to us. I still remember people like Sarah Appadate and said, we hear you're helping women. Mm -hmm. We have this dreadful case. Can mm. you help us? Mm. We mm. said, yeah, sure. Mm. Mm. So we got onto, we hired lorries, trucks. Went into town, demonstrated, Ooh, placards. Because of one case. case of, yes, a, a, a horrific case of okay. sexual assault mm. by very powerful people oh. in the district. Oh. So so um, we just had banners and slogans and saying, this guy is bad, singing with his name. And um, BBC was following us all around, you know, Benjamin uh, Emojong and all that, mm -hmm. Odeke. Mm -hmm. Then... Um, Cl teachers, when they heard the story of what had happened, left the, the class, followed by the students. They joined us. Wow. Nurses left hospital. Ooh. Police women said they were putting down their arms if ah. this man was allowed out. 
And just overnight, domestic violence as a crime became something. Yeah, and, the message you know, came out loud oh, and clear, violence mm, against women mm, is a crime. Is a crime. Mm. That's when I got started getting awards for the work. Uh -huh. I got a Guinness Power of Goodness Award. Mm -hmm. Then I got uh, the Federation of African Women in Education Award. Fawe. Mm. Fawe. Then Namagunga asked me to receive an award Ooh. for social works, educating ah. the girl child. I couldn't go, but my mom went. Oh. And by then she was elderly. She was, you know, using a, a frame. Mm. She got on stage, that stage where I used to stand as deputy head girl and read the names of all the girls who had spoken vernacular. Uh -huh. So if you spoke vernacular, especially <laughs> in Uganda at During school, the week. You're in my red book. Oh, yes. And then I said, the following, follow me after assembly, punishment. Mm. So here was my mother, a very simple woman from the village, receiving my award. Mm, wow. But in true style to her, she didn't even receive my award. She instead took the platform and made, made, used it as agency. She became an agent to inspire girls to study. Mm. And she said, I was a teacher. I taught girls like you, my eldest daughter, is now a doctor, she mm. studied here. Mm. My second is a doctor, she studied here. Atuki was here, Gonza, a teacher, taught here. Ooh. Evelyn. Wow. She just got a standing so ovation. These powerful girls. She got a standing ovation. Mm. It was no longer about me. It People was no saw longer that about you. This was now bigger than just Atuki. For the girl child cause yeah, in the country. Yeah, girl child mm. cause. Mm. So then, very one year after we did the Domestic Violence Advice Center, mm. the first one in Uganda, mm. she told me, you know, if you really want to address domestic violence, you can't ignore Bride Price. Mm. And I thought, Bride Price? What's mm -hmm. wrong with Bride mm -hmm. Price? Mm -hmm. Charming gift, mm -hmm. charming tradition. Mm -hmm. You know, and she told me a, the story of how this young girl was tortured in her village when she was young. And my mother was just 10. She was tortured in the village center. Wow. Really badly tortured by the men. And my mom, who was then 10, asked, what has she done? And they said, she, you know, she was about to be married to this rich and man. Cows had been mm. paid. Mm. And then she was found to be pregnant by her boyfriend. Ah. The cows had to be returned. And so they were almost, you know, forci forcefully uh, trying to abort her. Oh, yeah. So, so then um, it really shocked me. And I, I thought, no, we have to stop this. Ooh. That's when Mifumi embarked Started. on its 15 years campaign. Oh, yeah, against Bright against Price. Bright you Price. ended up in court. Then actually. went to the court, Supreme Court, of court Appeal? the mm. Court of Appeal, wow. Constitutional Court. We uh -huh. lost. Uh -huh. You know, the, all the judges except Justice Tuino Oh yes. He said, I'm a lawyer. I've lived in Uganda. I've practiced law. I know this thing exists. Mm. As soon as a woman, a young girl has finished, can read and write her name, they think she's ready for marriage. Mm. And they demand the payment. And if she leaves, they demand they have to the refund. refund. Yes. But all the rest said, no, you can't throw out the baby our practice. with the bathwater. Mm, it's mm, our practice. Mm. I was so disappointed with that first ruling. Mm, yeah. It really hit us mm, hard. Mm. So, so really, that's when I suffered. Like, uh, what do I do next? I was really, it was a very low moment for me. Mm. Um, that's when I decided to go and do my PhD. Mm -hmm. uh, just as, what else? And so I went and did PhD looking at um, social issues like mm -hmm. Bride Price mm. and how stories. Because yes. by then I was really wanting to write a story. How my mother's story led me to this to campaign, do this kind of work, yeah. which then changed mm, culture. Mm, so that was mm. my PhD. Wow. Um, and I had by then done my master's in creative writing and, wow. gender. and gender. So really, just coming back to that you multi a multi talented, yeah, yeah. creative Rich person with mm. so many giftings here yeah. and there. Mm. So we knew that it was flawed. Mm -hmm. The ruling was flawed, and that's when we decided to go to the court of public opinion. Wow. And we made the film, What Price, Bride Price. Uh -huh. So you can find it on YouTube. Okay. Yeah, now it's it's really quite popular, especially with the West African, the Nigerians. Uh, they have also many soaps on oh, Bride yes, Price. Yes. Then while we're doing that, we just showed ordinary men and women telling their story of how they've suffered because, because of Bride, of bride price. price. Right. And I think that sort of changed public opinion and people's attitudes. Mm -hmm. So that by the time we went to the Supreme Court, there had been a shift in attitude. There had been a shift in yeah. attitude. You know, attitude take a while to change. To change. Of course, people's yes. mindset. Yes. You know, so it, it, it needs a lot of education and, and, yes. and all that. And yeah, but culture changes. Culture changes, yeah. yeah. And I think now marriage happens, but people are still stuck to payment of right price. But now they are saying we call it marriage gift. Yes, we uh -huh. call it marriage gift. Yeah. And, and at least... And um, it's not refundable anymore. And it's not refunded. That least. has slackened yeah. mm. the hardest part of mm -hmm. bride price. That mm. one which 
changed yeah. many, many women. So we credit you know? Mufumi for that particular work and output. Thank you. Yeah, I think, because I then. think so, yes. Yeah. 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 Um, mm. yeah, I think so. It will act as a catalyst for other right. demands. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of your impact besides this issue of bride price, what else can we talk about as Mufumi? I yeah. know that one is very close to our hearts as women. Yes. The issue of bride pricing. You know, we had also, while you were doing that uh, at, court, uh, at Court of Appeal, we were in Parliament trying to advocate yes. for the removal, actually, yes. of bride price. Oh, my, oh, we faced a yes. lot of resistance yes, from it was various in the sectors. Domestic yeah. Relations Bill. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that was well, one of the issues which actually then was uh, a very popular issue, which people didn't want, which Parliament was against. But with your matter, when it went to court, then it came back and supported our argument and said, yes, yes. court has agreed with court these people. So then we must work with it. So it has yeah. helped a lot, change the attitude. It really changed mm. and it also contributed to African jurisprudence. Yeah. So we changed the African law. Uh -huh. So now it's actually taught in law schools around Makerere, wow. uh, SOAS in the UK, mm -hmm. Warwick, the mm -hmm. univers USA, Cornell mm -hmm. University. Wow. So it's kind of contributed um, to the African jurisprudence, even outside Africa. That's your contribution in the legal uh, fraternity. Then. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. But it's also inspired, um, I mean, besides this, Mifum is also educated so many young girls. Ooh. We had what we call the Sure Start Club, and that trained young girls to, you know, on leadership skills, ah. using the art of karate to, you know, learn how physical and mental conditioning okay. can be used to avoid risky situations. Mm. Those girls are really empowered. Empowered and they great. Even, mm. they, even took a, they even took a petition to Honorable Rebecca Kadaga oh, yes. regarding mm. sanitation and mm. sanitary in towels schools. in mm. schools. Mm. We've... In Tororo, at one time, we were the chief employer. We used to have over 150 employees. Okay. The foreign exchange we were bringing in was about was the great. second mm. highest in the district. Mm. But the visibility it's given to women mm -hmm. and men who are now supporting us. Mm. The women in Tororo are so empowered. They feel visible. Whenever they say, you know, they say you've helped us, mm. we can now walk with our heads mm. high, held mm. high. People used to think we were nothing. Now we know we're as women. We are we are also people. Yes. And I think that's kind of something you will only be able to to um, assess yep. after time has after passed. After time has passed. Yeah. Wow. Because the U Uganda Bureau of Statistics every year comes out with these st statistics of domestic, domestic violence, violence, and is they it say Toro has the highest. Toro has the highest. It's because of reporting, probably. Yeah. Yeah. It's because the women are empowered. I'm more aware of yeah. their rights and mm. the community. I feel like there's a lot. Your your interview cannot actually be exhausted in one single interview. There should be another because now this alone has taken almost all our time. But yes. I, I I know that right now you're working in about 14 districts in the country, and mm. that's a great impact. Yes, Some organizations well, no, are just in one place. And, yes. And uh, I, I want to pick your mind on, of course, you are more experienced in intervening in the, the lowest and the lowest of communities. Yes. That's where the problems are. That we're We've been accused for being in the you know, boardrooms in Kampala and all that. I yes. think you could just make a comment on that. Yeah, well, mm. a grassroots-based community, mm -hmm. the largest grassroots-based yeah. community, mm. and a campaigning and pioneering organization, as I've told you. Mm. But that's really where the problem is. Yeah. You know, the oppression and traditions are very entrenched mm. and there are no services okay so we have the Mifumi model is a legal aid legal uh, advice center mm -hmm. offering support hand holding women so if you have to report the case to police one of what our champions mm. and volunteers escorts you works with you because it can be very intimidating of course so mm. they go there they go through the police the courts um the advice centers have a um, legal officer and a social worker mm -hmm. and uh, then we have this army of volunteers in the community wow. we wow. call them champions mm. men women young people mm. just protecting women mm. and creating a supportive environment so that the burden is not on the woman for you know for reporting the abuse but it's taken off her and shouldered by the community mm. and we're in consortium right now with um we call it the heroes it's a consortium between amref ICRW, which is the International Center mm, for Women in Research, mm, and mm. Cord Aid. Wow. So we're in 14 districts working with young people Ooh. on sexual health, mm. you know, sexual rights, mm. encouraging them to take, have choices and yes, options and supply. control. Yes. Mm. And right now, in fact, next week there'll be a team because it's um, supported by the Dutch Embassy. Mm. We're in partnership with the 
Dutch embassies. So they'll be going to Kalangala, we, where we also work. Wow. And imagine Kalangala. Wow. A district with over 84, 80 islands. Wow. 64 of them are inhabited. Quite risky life. When a perpetrator mm. commits offense, he runs, he to, runs another to another district. Island. Mm. On the island, they have a saying that there's no woman, there's no young girl on this island. Mm. So every girl is considered available. A, a potential mm. woman. Ooh. So, so we've supported girl, a girl who was harassed and we, you know, we thought she was very brave to, mm. to report sexual harassment. Whoa. When a 60-year-old man was saying to everybody in the village, she's my wife. Or your muchala yange, yeah. <laughs> so muchala she was attempting to commit suicide, mm. and we intervened, and the man was taken to court and cautioned, I think, even arrested. And she's now in school. She's now in. We brought her to school here in Kampala, in Kampala. just because she had suffered so much so trauma. So much trauma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think we now have a movement, the Wingfumi Women's Network. Wow. Across the fourteen districts, mm. and we are growing. Mm. I think we're the fastest mm. growing. You are women's rights, feminist mm. movements. Wow. And uh, we just hope that more people can more join people us. More people can join, mm. more groups, yeah. more individuals. Yes. And mm. I can tell that you're having a very networking ability, even outside the country. You, you're you networking quite very well in terms of, you know, that support. And, and mm. you, as it is, of course, for your kind of work, networks are very, very yes, critical. Yes, that, that's yeah. right. Mm. Yeah, we, ha we have partners in South Africa. Mm. We've supported projects in Kenya. We have a UK office. We have friends in Canada. Ooh. We we it's 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 uh, I think Jersey Jersey community mm. in the UK the Jersey Island practically built the school. Wow. The teachers' uh, quarters, the health center. Wow. You know, supporters our funders like Comic Relief. Mm. We built the first um, a police unit mm -hmm. in Kirewa near Mifumi, mm. in partnership with the German government. Then we've built a second police unit. Now there are CFPUs everywhere. Wow. But when Mifumi started with the police, there was even nothing like recording nothing domestic like, yes. violence yes. statistics. They mm. were just lumped under mm. with assault. Mm. So I think that you have to, my husband and I always say, be careful what you, you'd wish for. Okay. Because your dreams can come true and actually your dreams are can often overwhelm you. It, well, yeah. Because yeah? mm -hmm. all we wanted was a school. A small thing. A, yeah, a school. Just to change a Just few lives kids, here and there. Just let them study in a good, yeah. you know, good school. Mm. We didn't expect to be Mostrum fighting yeah. domestic violence, bride price. Build this network. Our lives taken over. But wow. that's been my life. Do you feel satisfied with what you've done so far? Or there are some things that you would have loved, you know, to, to, to do yes. so far? I think I if I was in your shoes, I'd mm. be, I feel quite enriched by your story that you have impacted. I haven't a written person. that book. Uh -huh. I haven't written that novel. I was always going to be a writer mm. or mm. a politician. Mm. Mm. The writing has stayed with me. Okay. And I write every day. I write poetry, scripts, novels, short stories. Uh -huh. I've won some awards yes. there. Mm. But I haven't yet written that book. Apparently, we are supposed to live when we're exhausted. We've exhausted all our talents. <laughs> so yes. I hope you don't leave this world when you have not exhausted no. all those talents yes. that you came with. Yes, I would with. love to. Yeah. I'd love to write my mother's story. That's wow. the next one I'm writing now. Wow. My I would mother's love story. To write, but I, I don't seem to find time to do you it. Must get, well, next week, I'll, in my early May, I'll be write, running a creative writing masterclass. Okay. At, uh, around in Kampala. Wow. So it will be a small one. It's in partnership with the University of East Anglia. Mm. They have what they call an Africa International Program mm. on writing. Mm. And the chair is this wonderful writer called Titisi Dangaremba. Mm -hmm. She's a Zimbabwean writer. The novel she wrote about 10, 15 years ago called Nervous Conditions mm -hmm. was, you know, ranked one of the most 100 powerful books wow. in the world wow. that changed the wow. way the world wow. thinks. Wow. So she's the chair. And I think she's been to Uganda before. Wow, yeah, so I so, should be one of the students coming mm, on one of these days. Yes, and I can definitely. I can imagine you're going to, it's another project that you, you want to make impact on in the country. And I know hearing from what you've done so far already, that would be one of the biggest again in terms of growing writers. As you know, in the country, yes. we don't have quite that culture. Very few writers, mm. also female. Yes, yeah. So, yeah, yeah I think yeah. I look forward to that contribution. Thank you, thank you. Well, but just to say, Jennifer mm. Makumbi, yeah, mm. she's mm. lovely. She wrote a book called Kintu. Okay. Kintu. She is a Ugandan and she's a wonderful writer. Wow. I, yeah, I just had to throw that in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. so I would like you to inspire some, uh, I don't know, young women, writers, 
uh, civic leaders yes. because you've led a life of civic leadership generally. Of course, this show is really about leadership, inspiring women, young women into leadership, whichever sector they go into. Yes. But we want to see more women, more women in all leadership levels. We are dreaming for a future where we can, you know, really see more women's contribution. And yes. also the numbers. We want to have 50-50. <laughs> Half is better. That's what we are always saying. So yes. we are having this worry that if we just wait for affirmative action, it's not going to get us where we want as a country. And so it will take probably another 50 years to have that parity also. So yes. we are trying to be intentional and creative about this. So we want to we use these videos for training here mm -hmm. and there. And so it's very, very important as well to inspire. What are some of those things that have kept you going in terms yes. of values of life? Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Thanks. Thanks, Honorable Amon. Mm. And, yeah. and really, I had hoped you were ending, but we're continuing. No, no, no. We're I'd about to end. <laughs> I'd love to see more camera women. Okay. So your young cameramen uh -huh. should train our women oh. because this, we need to tell our stories. Yep. We really need to tell our stories mm. and we need to have our voices mm -hmm. heard, especially the voices of people in the communities. Mm, mm, I have mm. a um, web, you know, website, I now call it the largest African women's village platform, wow. social media, where I just want to talk to ordinary people and let wow. them tell their stories. Wow. So it's important that we tell our own stories. Mm. So do write, mm. write journals. Mm write memoirs mm -hmm. even if you write 200 words a day, a day. record your the your trick day. is writing every day yeah trick is writing every day mm. because as you write you learn something about what's in your heart and uh -huh. your mind and your mind and what's happened to you mm. during the course of the day mm -hmm. um for the young girls who are really now suffering the outcome you know the the fallout from covid mm. and the teenage pregnancies oh, yes. And just to Quite say, it's not the end of it's the world. It's not the end of the world. It's not. There is no permanent condition. No. Yeah. There are many mm. very successful people out there who had children mm -hmm. outside mm. marriage and when they were still in school. Mm -hmm. And they've gone back to school. You know, people I know and who would come. sit in class and yeah. the children are outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would love to see that kind of work happening yes. where we, you know, just allow the girl child even to come with their child yes. and have a nursery and daycare a nursery. for them. And we must mm. ask, how did these girls get pregnant? Yeah. We know that biologically, mm -hmm. yes, this is how you get pregnant. Mm. But what was the situation, the condition? Were they in a coercive situation? Mm -hmm. Did mm. they give consent? Were, were they defiled? So that we know how to protect such, such girls in future. Absolutely. Um, and then, and then um, you know, in fact, I... It's just amazing. I know a woman who actually got a baby every year of, of medical her life. school. Oh, and she was married, ah. but she managed to do this really Somehow. hard medical work mm, and with raise her children as well at the yeah. same time. So women are powerful. Mm. Women, girls, mothers—you mm. know—they're just super women. Yeah, yeah. And what we fear most is our own power. Mm. All of us have that fear of who we are because we know we are powerful. We are. And if you unleash that power, you can do wonders. So girls, you know, boys, men, women, politicians, mm. you can change the world. You can change the we, world. We can change the we world. We can change the world. Mm. And, and what stops us, it's just that fear. Mm -hmm. What will happen? Wow. And, you know, my f favorite book, so, you know, author Susan Jeffers, mm -hmm. instead of, in terms of inspirational novels, okay. she wrote a book, Feel the Fear, but do it anyway. Do it anyway. Yeah. yeah what you know, fear. Space, uh -huh. space, civic Space TV has asked you to come. Oh, my heart is beating. <laughs> Feel the fear, do it anyway. Do it anyway. And, you know, whatever happens, you can handle it. Okay. Mm. That's very, very powerful. You can powerful. handle it. So mm. we just have to try and make this world a better place. Mm. And manners make it man, they say. Mm -hmm. I say manners make it woman because mm -hmm. uh, my household is a household of girls. Okay. My daughter, my nieces. But at Mifumi, we interview hundreds of, of employees. Women. Okay. Mm. Honestly, they are all gifted, skilled. They have lovely grades. The people we take on board are the people are with the manners. The, oh, are not the, those with very high no, grades. it's who mm. you are, your personality, your character, oh, yes. your manners. Mm -hmm. And what I see now in Uganda is that we, there's so much healing that we have to do so that there's a lot more cordiality in, in civic space. Wow. You know, so that when you're lost and you stop to ask for directions, mm -hmm. you're received warmly. Mm -hmm. If you go to the supermarket mm -hmm. and you're at the counter, you mm -hmm. want to, you know, customer care. Mm -hmm. That, I think, is slipping away from us as a country. Wow. Because in, in Buganda, for instance, we always used to say, 
Mpisa Nunji, yeah? Mpisa Nunji. <laughs> That's really, and everybody knew Buganda is the place with culture, they do, good manners. Actually. Mm. We need to have that happening across the country. Across Whether you're a border border, mm. taxi driver, doctor mm -hmm. seated behind your desk, mm. respect the patient. Wow. The nurse, respect the woman who's come to deliver, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd like to see in hospital schools. Love these children, you know, respect their rights, mm. don't use corporal mm. punishment, don't, yes, yeah. we really mm. need to get back to basics. Okay, mm. wow, I think we do. I don't <laughs> know if I, I am tempted just to keep talking to you, but I think we could use more of you in leadership development courses and you know, just inspirational, motivational mm. talks because you have a lot to share. Maybe to I'll you. write a book you on should. it. You should. don't know about a course. I mean, yes. we can't exhaust your life in this one interview of one hour, but I know mm. this, this interview of yours uh, has humbled me and has it's inspired me as a person as well. And I know it's going to do the same for somebody who will come across it uh, in their programs to watch it. So I'd like us to wind up from here and maybe just one last one because your interview is so sweet and so rich. Where do we see you? Okay. Okay. Yes. A few more years ahead because All I know. All right. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Wow. Goodness, you floored me with yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. Um. Well, you I must think, be at another level. As, of life as um, mm. Ocheno said, mm. I'm a bit media shy, and I told him, No, I'm not. And he said, Okay, then come on board. <laughs> Maybe I'd like to you to hear more of my voice. Yes, yeah, sure and see me more in society because um, I think that's where I just want to be with the ordinary mm -hmm. people in the communities. Mm. In my country, contributing where I can. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think it's important to say that at the end of the day mm. of our lives, mm. all that matters mm. is who you loved mm -hmm. and who loved you. Yes. Everything falls by the wayside. Everything falls. So I'd just, yeah. love to, I'd mm. just love to be far more available, far more with the people mm. who love me. Mm -hmm. And the people I love. The people you love. And and that includes community. That is so where it. will you see me? Honestly, I don't know. I'm, I... I I'm in and out a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, work internationally. Okay. But I've come back, and I don't really want to go back. Mm, Uganda so is sweet. Around. Home is nice. Yes. East or west, you know, <laughs> it's always home. Mm, wow. Thank you. Okay, we shall see you around. I know. So grateful that you were able to make some time to come here. Your story is so rich. It's so enriching. I'm sure young women out there, this uh, particular story will will keep you humbled and will keep you desiring to do more desiring to impact more and to do more in terms of societal development. And uh, I know we are going to meet again in different spaces. I would like to see more of you in these spaces. Uh, as you work at the local level, we also learn, want to hear from you in terms of, you know, that, that, that story at the national level. It's mm. very, very rich and very impactful. So wish you well. Thank Say hello you. to your family and uh, keep the girls going. Thank you Tell very them because much. of that sisterhood, we mm. need that sisterhood at a wider level. Yes. That's why we are here in terms of this program. Thank you. Thank, Thank, Thank you, you so very much, much Honorable And uh, for our viewers, for having keep me. having that discussion, keep sharing, keep inspiring. Keep I think that's what <laughs> Madame Atiku's story has been about today. So until we meet again in the next episode, Shalom. Mm.